welcome to the Robert Emmett Day Commemoration. My name is Liam Frost and I am President of the United Irish Societies of San Francisco. Each year we come together to celebrate and honor Robert Emmett, the poet and patriot. This year necessitates that we do it by video. I want to thank Hilda Gassane, Dermot Philpott, and Valerie McGrew for planning and directing the event. I would also like to take this time to thank our Grand Marshal, Con Lyons, for participating with us. I am hoping next year we will be able to invite the crowds back and honor Robert together. Thank you. Thank you and welcome. Good afternoon. On behalf of the United Irish Societies of San Francisco, I would like to welcome you to the 101st commemoration of Robert Emmett's life. My name is Hilda Kassane and I am a service secretary of the United Irish Societies. Robert Emmett was born in 1778 in Dublin, Ireland. The Irish patriot and orator was the leader of the abortive 1803 rising in Ireland against British rule. On September 19, 1803, Robert Emmett, a young man of 25, stood before the British Chief Justice, Lord Norbury, ready to recite his now famous speech from the dock and hear the dreadful sentence for treason, to be hanged, drawn, and quartered, as was customary. But to British uh, mercy, he was only hanged and beheaded. This sentence would be carried out the very next day. His words are an inspiration to the Irish Republicans, especially in the years leading up to the 1916 Rising. To this day, the speech continues to inspire Irish nationalists looking forward to a united Ireland. We are proud to have Dermot Philpott here today to read a portion of that speech. A prominent Irish San Franciscan, James Phelan, father of the future mayor and modern controversial character, donated this statue of Robert Emmett to San Francisco in 1919. There are three copies of the statue in existence. Ours stands here outside of the Academy of Sciences in Golden Gate Park Concourse. Eamon de Valera, future president of Ireland, dedicated this statue in front of a large crowd of Irish patriots. They did not have the Spanish flu restrictions in, for crowds in those days. For the last hundred years, the Irish community have commemorated his memory with great enthusiasm, Irish pipers, music, and dance. On this, the 101st anniversary, due to COVID-19 restrictions, our celebration will be more modest, but nonetheless heartfelt. We look forward to the future when we can partner once again with the Golden Gate Park Band for a grand celebration. We would like to thank the Irish Pipers, Maggie uh, of San Francisco for performing the stirring music. A video of this event can be found on the United Irish Society social website and Facebook page, and on the United Irish Cultural Center social media, including its new YouTube channel. As Rune O'Donnell, noted Irish historian said, Robert Emmett is arguably the most popular and least understood Irish patriot of his generation. Far more significant within the leadership of the revolutionary United Irishman than generally acknowledged, Emmett's heroic legacy extended to the USA, where he's been memorialized to an extent unmatched in his native country. I would now like to ask Dermot Philpott to come to read a portion of Emmett's speech from the dock. Let no man dare, when I am dead, to charge me with dishonor. Let no man attaint my memory by believing that I could have engaged in any cause 
was that of my country's liberty and independence. Or that I could have become the pliant minion of power in the oppression and the miseries of my countrymen. The proclamation of the provisional government speaks for our views. No inference can be tortured from it to countenance barbarity or debasement at home or subjection, humiliation or treachery from abroad. I would not have submitted to a foreign oppressor for the same reason that I would resist the domestic oppressor in the dignity of freedom I would have fought on the threshold of my country and its enemy should enter only by passing over my dead body. And, and am I who lived out for my country and who would have subjected myself to the dangers of the jealous and watchful oppressor and the bondage of the grave only to give my countrymen their rights and my country her independence? Am I to be loaded with calumny and not suffered to resent or repel it? No, God forbid. If the spirit of the illustrious dead participate in the concerns and cares of those who are dear to them in this transitory life, or ever dear and venerated shade of my departed father, look down with scrutiny upon the conduct of your suffering son and see if I have, even for a moment, deviated from those principles of morality and patriotism which it was your care to instill into my youthful mind and for which I am now to offer up my life. My lords, you are impatient for the sacrifice. The blood which you seek is not congealed by the artificial terrors which surround your victim. It circulates warmly and unruffled through the channels which God created for noble purposes, but which you are bent to destroy for purposes so grievous that they cry to heaven. Be ye patient. I have but a few more words to say. I am going to my cold and silent grave. My lamp of life is nearly extinguished. My race is run. The grave opens to receive me, and I sink into its bosom. I have but one request to ask at my departure from this world. It is the charity of its silence. Let no man write my epitaph, for as no man who knows my motives dare now vindicate them, let not prejudice or ignorance asperse them. Let them and me repose in obscurity and peace, and my tomb remain uninscribed until other times and other men can do justice to my character. When my country takes her place among the nations of the earth, then, and not till then, let my epitaph be written. I have done. Thank you very much, German. We would like to uh, thank Maggie for leading us out.